Since its launch in December 2021, NASA's James Webb Space Telescope has successfully reached and surpassed a number of important milestones in launch arrival and configuration. The mirrors and instruments are being cooled and calibrated over the telescope's first six months in space in preparation for science operations. So far, it's either right on or even ahead of schedule for everything. This incredible piece of machinery carries the hopes and dreams of all astronomers. Equipped with the largest and most advanced telescope science has to offer, JWST will usher in a new era of astronomy for the likes of you and me. Now, while the telescope is still very early into its mission and has yet to make any groundbreaking observations, these terrific and amazing first images captured by the JWST give us a taste of what this telescope is truly capable of. With the James Webb Space Telescope fully operational, we have its first ever perfect image. The photo shows a spiky image of a faraway star, photobombed by thousands of ancient galaxies. The $10 billion telescope successfully aligned with its near infrared camera, NIR Cam, and took its first ever clear image. Keep in mind that this image, released on March 16 from the James Webb Space Telescope, is a test shot, not an official science observation. It is meant to see how the 18 hexagonal mirrors work together for a single coordinated image taken 1 million miles away from Earth, and well, it worked even better than expected. To non-astronomy fans, this may seem like a fairly average image of the stars, but let me explain to you why this image is so much more than it leads on. Firstly, as you can tell, the centerpiece of the image is this very bright star with what seems to be six spikes coming out of it. Well, the spikes are an indication of how bright this particular star is. The spikes are similar to a glare on a photo, which is nothing new. What is new is everything else in the background. Light pollution doesn't only affect us here on Earth, but the telescopes in space as well. If any other telescope were to look at this bright star, the light from this star would drown out everything else in the image. But not for Webb. The JWST uses an infrared camera to capture images. You see, the JWST isn't just a big telescope, it's designed to ignore light pollution. It's meant to see even the dimmest of lights in the distance. So while any other telescope would just see the bright star, JWST sees the bright star and everything else it's hiding behind. That's what makes this image so amazing. These aren't just a cluster of stars and galaxies, these are a cluster of stars and galaxies that we've never seen before. The light captured from these galaxies is billions of years old. What's even crazier is that this image wasn't really meant to be studied. Over the course of three months, the JWST has been calibrating its telescope. It's a long and meticulous process. This image was taken with the purpose of calibration. Sure, we can study it in depth, but it was really just meant to test the cameras. And now that we have everything aligned and fine-tuned, the real fun begins. The next time a photo is released from the JWST, it will be a photo with intent. A specific galaxy or star that NASA has an interest in. When that comes our way, a plethora of questions and observations will surely follow. Oh, but don't think I'm done blowing your mind. Yes, the galaxies in the background are amazing and ancient, but the star itself is just as new to us as the galaxies. Scientists said they were giddy as they watched the latest test photos arrive. Do you know why that test image was aimed at a star 100 times fainter than the human eye can see, 2,000 light years away? For clarity, a light year is nearly 6 trillion miles. This bright star is actually one of the faintest stars in the night sky. We can't see it here on Earth, it's barely observable with any other telescope. But here we have the James Webb making it look as bright as the sun. Imagine just how much more we can see now. If this little faint corner of the sky appears to be this clear, we haven't even begun to map out the sky. It's hard to comprehend just how much we'll be able to see by the end of Webb's mission. Eventually, scientists hope Webb will see so far away and back in time that it will be only a couple of hundred million years after the Big Bang. In terms of astronomy, that's practically in the same decade as the start of the universe. The actual scientific images won't come to us until late June or early July. When those images begin to roll in, the real study of exoplanets and ancient galaxies will start. And boy, am I excited! 
more to come. While this stunning picture has gotten the scientific community giddy with excitement, the work is still not done. The observatory still has four other instruments that it must be able to switch between with perfect alignment to obtain sharp images of distant objects. Next, the guiding instrument called the Fine Guidance Sensor, FGS, needs to be deployed and then extend to the other three instruments. On March 17, NASA's web engineer stated that this process called multi-instrument multi-field alignment will take six weeks to complete. Webb should complete its commissioning period around June, six months after launching on December 25. And while switching between cameras and space is difficult and complicated, the telescope will eventually be able to use multiple instruments at the same time. It may seem like an absurdly long time to calibrate such a high-tech piece of machinery, but you have to keep in mind that ground-based telescopes have the advantage of having engineers available on-site to potentially remove or adjust instruments. However, on Webb and other space telescopes, the procedure is very different. Everything happens remotely, so things take much longer to complete and fine-tune. Fear not, summer will be here soon enough, and we'll really be in business. The FGS already reached its own milestone recently, finishing fine guide mode. This occurs when the guider zeroes in on a guide star to the instrument's highest possible precision. Additionally, engineers are taking dark images to see what happens when the instrument has no light reaching it, which allows personnel to calibrate the instrument even further. The last instrument to be aligned will be the mid-infrared instrument, or the MIRI, as it is awaiting a cryogenic cooler's ability to bring it to its operating temperature of minus 448 degrees Fahrenheit or minus 267 degrees Celsius. When everything is up and running, images like this will be a common achievement by the James Webb Space Telescope. What do you think? Do you have anything in particular you want the JWST to zoom in on? The possibilities are limitless.